want to experience is a free worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 185 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to see you. Great to have you here. Uh, tonight we're going to be continuing our series on web development. We are in uh, episode number five of that. Yes. Very excited uh, to be moving through that. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about it uh, a little bit uh, later on. In the meantime, <laughs> hey Krista. How's it going? Good. Good. We, we, we never quite have it planned out how we're going to kick things off. It's like, okay, go, go, go. <laughs> and we're on. How's your week going? Oh, busy so far. Busy, yeah. busy. Yourself? Yeah. About the same. Yeah. Yeah, it seems everything's kind of picking up, eh? Yeah, it's the spring, spring fever. Is that what it is? I think so. Is everybody shopping for spring and getting ready for, uh, you know, everybody seems to be buying websites. That's good. That's so That's awesome. excellent. It is, <laughs> it is good. Eric, how are you, sir? I am well. Good to see you. And how's the rest of the gang out there? Hey, Cat5 TV viewers. <laughs> yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. yeah, lots of people in the chat room. Eric is there. Uh, um, Krista is there. I am there. Say hello. Uh, I've been relatively room. quiet in the chat room so far. Have you? <laughs> Normally have. you're just creating a nuisance over there. Well, I try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us online, category5.tv, and within that site you'll see the interact menu, and there is the, uh, the live chat room where uh, if you're watching this during the live show, you'll be able to join us in the chat room. And of course, if you're catching this after the fact, you can also jump into the chat room. There's, uh, there is some activity throughout the week as well when we're not live on the air, and it'd be nice to see you there. Uh, this week on our website, Category5.tv, we introduced a new feature. Very excited about this. We're always trying to uh, increase the amount of, uh, I guess, uh, community interaction, the ability for people to be able to communicate with other people on the site and, and really become a part of the Category5 TV community. And one of the things that you'll find on our website now, if you're a registered user and you log into the website, is uh, that we have internal messaging, which is basically like... Uh, like an email service for Category 5 viewers uh, that is strictly within the, the uh, website itself. So you can send messages to, to me and to other people that are registered on the site uh, and you can communicate that way. It's, uh, it's quite cool. So, Pretty cool. Um, so we're still beta testing that and today I was testing it out and all right, we're almost ready. We're going to announce this on the show. It's great. And I sent out my first test email, like a, a mass mail, and it failed miserably. Of course. <laughs> so about six or 7,000 people have an email in their inbox that makes absolutely no sense, but it looks like it's from me. So if, uh, if you are the recipient of said email, it was because I was experimenting with encryption, because everything's going to be encrypted through the new system. We want to keep everything safe. So uh -huh. um, in that, the decryption algorithm was not quite in place. So you can go in and delete that. Uh, and of course, uh, that's going to automatically purge itself in 24 hours as well. Or you can hang on to it and talk to Robbie about it again sometime down the road. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know how many messages I've received <laughs> today saying, hey, what's going on with this email? It's just a bunch of gibberish. So if that's you, <laughs> just understand that it was a, a failed test attempt. And rather than starting over, we just decided to just let it go. It's going to expire in 24 hours and disappear from your inbox anyways. But that's a cool feature. <laughs> internal messaging and uh, you'll find that again on the interact menu but you have to be a registered viewer obviously in order to uh, send and receive messages within the service uh, and that's uh, I think going to be really cool so uh, send me a message on there just to say hey uh, also uh, we would welcome your viewer testimonials and speaking of uh, we do have uh, several viewer testimonials there at category5.tv again on our interact menu there are the viewer testimonials you can send your own and uh, we're just going to jump into some of the ones that have been received uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks. Eric, I'll let you uh, kind of take over at that point. All right, we have one uh, from uh, far, far away. This is from Kevin in Kenya. Hey, Kevin. Um, it's, uh, here it goes. I have watched this broadcast from episode one. Wow. Discovered oh. it when it was at episode 11, web campisodes, web campisodes. okay, got it. <laughs> and now it's huge. Never once did the information become stale. Each time there was, and still is, something to be learned. Love the new format. Each time there is a show and tell kind of theme, the web dev stuff made my day. Well, night. I may not always make it live on the show, but Miro religiously downloads the episodes and religiously watch them. Keep up the good work. So Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Kevin. Uh, one here from uh, Phil Cunningham. 
uh, from uh, or Cunningham because I'll probably get corrected. That's okay. Uh, from uh, Suffolk, uh, UK says well put together program a must for any computer freak or user. So there are two classifications according to who, Phil of computer users. Freaks one is and user users and one is freak. <laughs> I suppose I fall under the freak category. <laughs> Eric, we generally uh, use geek, but freak, uh, yeah, you know, is fine. Yeah, it works. Well, here's one from Dennis Kelly from uh, Grand Blank, uh, Michigan. Is hey, that is Michigan? Yes. Um, okay, and Robbie, again, I wanted to thank you for all your help and knowledge. Your show has helped me set up an Unraid, free NAS, multiple screens, and 3D Cube through Compiz. Thanks a lot, Dennis. Awesome. Always glad to help, Dennis. Uh, Ron uh, says, hey, guys. Uh, just a note to let you know, and maybe a few viewers, that I did my taxes with Ubuntu this year. Yes, I had to use VirtualBox, and I loaded XP into it, but it worked absolutely no problem. I just imported last year's taxes, and away I went. Thanks from Ron DeGay. And uh, that's very cool. Uh, neat to, to consider that, yeah, if you're, if you're limited to, you know, if you think that you have to have Windows, um, Maybe it's not the fa not the case. In this case, uh, Ron just simply went with virtualization, installed Windows XP to do his taxes. You could do you know whatever else that you need to do in XP, and then you shut it down, and you're back to Ubuntu. Uh, so that's very <laughs> cool. Very cool. All right. Well, here's one from Torben Dumer, or it could be Dumert, um, from Germany. Wow. I found Category 5.tv on Miro and was so impressed that I am now almost done with watching all the episodes I could find on Miro. It is absolutely amazing to see how the show constantly improved and I am looking forward to my first live experience tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, a lot of the programs you mentioned and tutorials you featured on the show have really helped me and I really like the interviews as well. Unfortunately, I now have the problem that I want a pogo plug. <laughs> I've never heard of it before I watched your show, and I don't really need one, but the features really got me hooked. Robbie, you are a great guy, and with a funny guy like Eric and the funny and adorable Hillary, your show offers a very unique combination of content and entertainment. I would, if, I would also like to greet Becca, Carrie, Christy, and John. Your show is Cool Beans. Cool Beans. <laughs> That's from Torben in Germany. Thanks, Torben. They're getting used to having you here. I I'd guess. say I'd say greets out to Krista as, as well. Um, she's of she's course. cool beans as well. I'm very cool beans. Oh, there, Tordo says. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Krista is adorable as well. Oh, yes. Why didn't I get called why, adorable? Why didn't I get called adorable? <laughs> I have been called adorable before. I've not called, by anybody named Torben. Krista's been called adorable on the show. Hillary's been called adorable. Eric's over there making noise, and I've been called a freak. <laughs> It's just how you look at it, I guess. It's just it's wow. the way you look at it. <laughs> Thanks, viewers. You can submit a viewer testimonial on our website, category5.tv. Click on Interact and go to Viewer Testimonials. You don't have to be a registered viewer for that. We also accept video testimonials if you'd like to uh, say hi by way of a, uh, a submitted video. That would be cool as well, and we'll display that on the air at category5.tv. Nice to have everybody joining us tonight. Great to see you in the chat room. Looks like a lot of people joining us there. Um, and uh, really great to have you. We have a copy of Wirecast that we're going to be giving away uh, within the next few weeks. And I would encourage you to uh, get onto our website, category5.tv. And again, on our Interact menu, you'll see the Wirecast giveaway. And uh, registered viewers are encouraged to vote on their favorite entries. Uh, and uh, we would appreciate you doing that. We're going to take those votes and we're going to uh, be able to pick out who the winner is uh, at the end of the contest to win a free copy of Wirecast which is the broadcasting suite that we, uh, that we use here at Category 5 in order to do the show. Uh, and you can find out more about the program itself at cat5.tv slash wirecast. Uh, but again, on our website, category5.tv, click on Interact, and then go down to the Wirecast giveaway. We'd really love to have you uh, help us to pick who the winner should be. Cool. Viewer questions. We, got lots. Have, we have some questions. Here's one I didn't get to uh, last week. We almost got to it, and it's mm, King. Yeah. Um, hi, Robbie the Super Geek. Oh, oh uh, look at all the names on it. Like Adorable. That's twice. Adorable. <laughs> Come on. Super Geek the Super Free. Uh, hi, Robbie. Um, <laughs> that wasn't all from 
yeah. Uh, I am using a laptop with an LCD monitor in extended mode instead of mirrored. The screen blackout button on my laptop is function F6. Whenever okay. I press that shortcut key, or those shortcut keys, the laptop screen goes to sleep immediately, but the LCD monitor still stays on. Is there any way that can they can be synced? Mm. Thank you. Cheers. In game. Yeah. I'm going to have to work on that name. Okay, Rob. Yeah. What do you got for us? We do our best. We certainly do. Um, I would say, see, the, the function F6 key is actually just um, going to basically put the laptop display to sleep, which is typically used to, like if you're doing a presentation, for example, what you're experiencing is what you should be experiencing. Um, it's meant to leave the projector running, connected to the D-sub or the VGA, but it would, uh, it would actually deactivate the laptop screen in order to, one, conserve battery power, but also to, uh, to keep it going uh, on the, the projector or external display. So that's, that's an intended uh, purpose of that key, to turn off just your internal display. Now, there, with what you're doing, what it sounds like is he wants to turn off both displays at the same time, or basically blank those two screens. There's a couple ways he can do that. Uh, first way, of course, is to use the blank screen saver, um, which is you know kind of a, a makeshift way to do it. Uh, Control Alt L in Linux is your lock key, so that locks your computer. And I tell my wife all the time, don't forget to lock your computer because the kids get onto it and they delete shortcuts off the desktop and they do stuff like that. So Control Alt L does more than just blank both screens. Uh, it also locks your computer to the point where you have to enter a password in order to get back onto the system, so it's pretty handy. Um, but that would um, have a similar effect. Now the other option, of course, is to use a command um, that would control the power savings of your, of your display. So for example, if you were to go into terminal or if you were to hit Alt F2, for example, and type X set DPMS force off, what that command is going to do, and I'm not going to do it on the show because then I'm going to lose my desktop, possibly uh, cause an issue with the capture, but what that actually does is it uses power save or uh, your suspend system, the DKMS, in order to suspend the output to the displays. And that will again, that should affect all displays connected to the computer because you're not specifying. Um, and uh, of course, be ready to, if, if you can't wake it with the mouse, Again, hit Alt F2, which is going to bring up your run dialog, which you may not be able to see with a black screen. Uh, and you would do the exact same command, X set DPMS, pardon me, uh, force on instead of off. And, uh, and then you have it back on. But moving your mouse, um, you've got to move it you know, a fair amount in order to get it to wake back up. Um, but that command is a little different than Control Alt L. Control Alt L leaves the monitors running but blanks them, uh, whereas uh, the uh, using uh, DPMS is going to actually turn off or suspend uh, those monitors as well. So, hope that that answers your question. In my experience with laptops, usually the function, whatever it is, F5 or 6 or whatever key it is, uh, usually there's three uh, positions. There's the, uh, the, the, uh, the laptop, right, the right. external monitor, or both. Well, um, there, there's the screen blanking key. Okay. But then there's also the, the one that you're thinking of there, Eric, is the one to change okay. which video okay. output you're using. Okay. And, and I thought about touching on that, but then I thought, well, that's not, uh, because he's actually trying to blank the screens and both of them at the same time, it's a little bit of a different scenario. I think that X set DPMS force off is probably going to be the best way to do it. So, all right. Um, and Eric, uh, just to get you into the chat room, if you bring up uh, Pigeon, uh, it's on the internet menu, and then when that comes up, hit uh, Buddies, and then Join. This is how you can actually connect using uh, using Pigeon. I might as well bring it up on my screen. Okay. Pigeon Instant Messenger is pretty great. So uh, join a chat? Yeah, join a chat. And just before I do that, I'm just going to disconnect from my MSN because I don't want to reveal people's email addresses. So <laughs> if you see me disappearing off MSN, you know why. There we go. Okay, so back at... Um, my computer. Here I've got the buddy list for Pigeon Instant Messenger up. And if I hit buddies, join a chat. Now I'm already connected to Freenode. Okay? So you can see I'm Robbie F at irc.freenode.net. Uh, under the channel there, you would type in pound or number sign or hash category 5. So the number sign and then category 5, no spaces. 
and then you hit join and you're actually going to show up in the chat room there. Um, and this is what it looks like. It actually comes in and looks uh, quite nice. It's easy to, to use um, and uh, a lot less lag than using, say, the, the web-based um, CGI chat. So this works quite well. Nice to have you join us in the chat there, eh? <laughs> there we go. I'm in. We can make a tutorial out of anything. They gave me a different <laughs> computer. Stuck me in the broom closet. Yep. This uh, this way, you know. Uh, and, uh, I I said last week. I mean, and, and this is, happens to be the week that he showered. You know. You know. And why did why did we have to put him in the, stuff, the little yeah. room there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. All right, we'll maybe take uh, one more question before we get started on our uh, on our maybe feature you will, here. Maybe you. Oh, okay, well, you know, sure. if you if you're ready for me. Here's one from. Uh, let's, oops, we just uh, I lost it. There we go. Sorry, I, I clicked in the wrong place. We have one from. This is a big one. I'm going to skip down one. Okay. And if you do get missed today, then do note that we will put you yes. in queue. We will try to get to you <coughs> in in a future show as well. Okay, here's a question from <coughs> Harry Burgos. And uh, the operating system we're talking about, it's a dual boot, Windows Ubuntu 10.10, perfect Ubuntu. Um, okay, so the question. Will the upgrade to 11.04 will get rid of my perfect Ubuntu or not? And probably I missed that show. Don't think so, but what's with the new kernel 2.6? Awesome show. Ten chocolates and five stars. I'll strap myself to a chair next Tuesday, next Tuesday not to miss the show. Always get to it late. Arg. Okay, <laughs> and that was from Harry. So there you go. Okay, so I'm not sure what you mean about the kernel there, um, but as far as uh, Perfect Ubuntu goes, when you upgrade your system to the new version of Ubuntu, uh, Perfect Ubuntu is a script that allows you to receive uh, and install some needed extras, stuff that gives you multimedia and things like that. Upgrading your system, you should be able to maintain um, some of those packages. However, because the repositories are going to change when you upgrade your system, you're going to actually lose the ability ability to update a lot of those. Some of them will still continue because they're from the official Ubuntu repository, so they'll automatically now be available in the new repositories for the new version. Um, but that said, some of the other stuff, some of the non-free things, are no longer going to be available. So at that point, you need to download the new version of Perfect Ubuntu from perfectbuntu.category5.tv, which, of course, uh, does not come out until after the uh, alpha test phase of 11.04. Uh, and the reason for that is that there are still a lot of repositories that have not yet uh, received all the packages. So we wait until about a week after the distribution is released and then code in the, uh, the new repository so that everything is there and everything rolls over just fine. Um, so, uh, of course, being that Ubuntu 11.04 doesn't release until the 28th, um, you're going to want to wait until that time in order to upgrade uh, and then watch perfectbuntu.category5.tv uh, to get the new version of the script and you'll be able to upgrade your system as well. Cool. A uh, good guy just reminded me that the beta was actually released a couple days, uh, a few days ago, and that, that's true. Um, I got a little lost there because they changed the way that they're doing the beta for 11.04. Everything is, is just like madness because they're doing so much to the operating system, the distribution. So much so that Jono Bacon has commented in his blog that, um, that he's excited about the progress, but at the same time, uh, it seems that there's a little bit of tentativeness and and warning that there are going to be several bugs to expect uh, when the operating system first comes out. Because I'd have to say that 11.04 is one of the biggest um, steps as far as Ubuntu's uh, and Canonical's pushing uh, the desktop um, towards, I guess, what you would call the future of desktop uh, operating systems. So it's going to be cool. Now, how about somebody who has 10.10 10 at this point? Yeah. Um, and the upgrade to 11, is it going to be uh, more resource intensive or are they going to be able to use it on the same systems or are we uh, going to have yeah, to upgrade be able some to. hardware yeah. as well? Yeah, you should be able to, I, I would expect. I mean, there have been problems with, uh, with Compiz and, and um, I think they've pretty much got those licked, but it's going to be more hardware specific, so I'd be very careful. Uh, if you have an older system, it might, you know, you want to always have a backup just in case that upgrade breaks your system. There's a possibility of that, but they do everything that they can before the launch, so the 28th, um, to make sure that it's not going to break systems. But of course, if you start playing with the alphas and betas, then there is a very high potential that you could break your system. So, 
Cool. So it is time to get back into web development. And uh, it's great to have Krista, uh, Krista Wells joining us. She's a graphic designer from Barrie, Ontario. Nice to have you here again. Cool. It's always good to be here. Yeah. And we are uh, just working on coding the website that, uh, that Krista has, uh, has developed for us. And, and uh, we learned that in the first part of the, uh, of the series, uh, web development, uh, which you'll find at cat5.tv slash webdev. Of course, the files that, uh, that we have created up until this point are available for free download. And uh, you don't have to be a registered viewer uh, in order to get there cat5.tv slash webdev and when you get there you'll see um, that we also have episode 184's files there um, so if you're following along with, with us tonight that's the best package to get um, that is going to have everything that we're going to be looking at right off the get-go another uh, key point here that uh, that I'd like to make is that you'll notice that the episodes have actually been broken up into their individual segments so when you click on watch part one, for example, you're getting a 23 minute seri uh, segment. Uh, part two is 35 minutes, part three is 30 minutes, and so on. Um, so we're doing up the series very much as we have in the past with the meet, uh, where the, uh, the series is being broken up and you're able to watch that without having to uh, necessarily watch the entire episode. You can just watch the feature itself. So again, that's cat5.tv slash webdev, and we'd love to have you follow along with us tonight. So we left off uh, just kind of working on our menu system last week, yep. and uh, you've got everything up on your screen there. All ready to go. You want go. to pull up a uh, desktop presenter for me, just so that uh, we can bring uh, up your, your computer screen if we need yeah. to as well. And uh, on my system here, I have the files from the 184 file uh, off of cat5.tv slash webdev. It contains my index.php, which I'm opening into gedit, and it contains my style.css, which I'm also going to uh, load up in there. Welcome to the show, JC Developments. Nice to have you here. So where we left off is uh, with our menu there, which we just kind of mocked up. Haha, <laughs> mocked up. <laughs> but it is text now, you see. So if we bring up our, uh, our browser, we go demo.cat5.tv. We're going to jump into the folder 002. And you see this is where we're at. So the menu is no longer an image. It's actually a graphical or a tech a text-based menu, so we can start making these into um, clickable links. One of the things when we're developing a website is we want to make sure that it's search engine optimized, so this contains a lot of text and things that the search engines are going to pick up on. Uh, one of the key things with your menu navigation system is that it, it really needs to be text, and uh, if it's not text, if you're going to go with images, um, there had, had really better be a good reason to do that. Um, be it a, a super fancy font or a button that just absolutely cannot be um, created using CSS and images uh, with text overlaid or something like that. Um, so there really needs to be a good reason for that and you need to use alt tags and uh, title tags in a case like that. Because the search engines are going to be looking through your file and they're going to find uh, only the text, the images are not necessarily going to get indexed the same way. So if I have a button that's, for example, about a spire place, um, then that is going to be uh, the name of that link, basically, as far as the search engines are concerned. So it, it's going to boost the, the standings of that search query. If it's just an image that says about a spire place, and they, it's still clickable, but it's not going to have the same weight in the search engines. The search engines are really looking at your front page uh, of the website as this is what my business is. It's very important that that mm -hmm. initial, you know, just like the the whole first impressions thing, right? For with people, a search engine gets on your website, and when it gets to category five dot TV, that has to say what the show is about and what is going on with this site. So the search engines say, okay, that's what category five dot TV is. All the sub pages, yeah, they need to be optimized too. But there, that's content within Category 5.tv. So Category 5.tv slash blog, uh, my blog, for example, is not going to carry the same weight as just Category 5.tv. So our homepage needs to be uh, pretty rich with text. And, and I want to tell you these things because I want you to be able to build a site that's going to do well in the search engines and also perform well uh, across multiple different platforms. So that's one of the reasons why we're going with text only here. So then you say, well, it just doesn't look the way that the mock-up did. So let's bring up our mock-up, which you'll find in your file under the raw folder. 
You can open that into Photoshop if you have it. You can open it in, into the free GIMP application from GIMP.org. Um, if you'd like to get that, it's available for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And you see that our menu here is all caps, and it is uh, just a white text, whereas on our website, it's coming in at, uh, in a different way. Now, uh, Krista, do you know what, uh, what font that you used for that menu there? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's just Arial. Just Arial? Yeah. Okay, and it just was all caps there. So, so what we can do now... It's, it's defaulting to like a, I don't know, it looks like a Times New Roman or something, which we definitely don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up our CSS, and that, uh, that ID, as we remember, is menu. So that text is actually falling in our index.php within the div ID equals menu. So with the menu CSS style, we can now start controlling what this is going to look like. So for example, color colon pound FFF, which is the same as saying FFF FFF. So again, to, for the sake of making a smaller file, we're going to go FFF. Reason for that is, just to kind of quickly explain how that works, it, to shorten uh, hexadecimal color code to three characters instead of six, which doesn't seem like a lot, you're only saving three bits of data. Uh, but in a huge CSS file, once your file gets quite large, it's going to it's going to amount to you know it could be kilobits of uh, or kilobytes of of data, which is, which translates into kilobits of download time and, and things like that. So, what how that works is the color white is FFF FFF. Okay, so to shorten that, you see FF FF FF. It all matches. So that way, I can go like that. Similarly, if, it, if my color were, I'm just going to make something up. I don't even know if it's a real color, PD, uh, like that, OK? Let's just pretend that that's a color. So that could be like that, because the, the DDs all matched up. However, if it was like, I don't know, give me a color, anything at all. Let's use our color up here. Do we have one? Yeah. Oh, and it's eight. Well, that's a, that's a good example. <laughs> Because see this one, you might think that you could go, OK, well, now that one can become 800. But it can't, because what that actually represents is 88, 0, 0, 0, 0, because it goes in twos, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, or 8, 8. So if I were to do it this way, it's the wrong color. So this particular color, that's why up here, we've had to leave that as six characters, as opposed to down here when it's FFF. We can leave that as three characters. So that's just a little small small trick. Um, and of course, you can use the GIMP to generate these color codes. If you're not sure what uh, what to use, bring up the GIMP and get in here to your color uh, palette here, and just click on your foreground. Where did we go? There we go. And now we've got this kind of swatch thing, where you can drag your cursor around and change the color. So if I wanted that color of red. You'll see over here, there's the actual color. Okay. If I wanted white, down at the bottom, there's the color. And there we go, all Fs. Okay. So that is obtained by clicking on my color swatch. Pardon me. So what we need to do, okay, so now what I've done is I've colorized that white. So let's uh, bring up our FTP application. I'm going to upload those changes to our, uh, our website itself. Okay. Now, at the end of the series, we're actually going to be able to offer you uh, web hosting at a discounted price as well. Um, so if you're considering developing a website, uh, then you uh, will want to stick around for that uh, coming up in a future segment uh, for the web development segment. We're just working on that right now, getting a partnership with the hosting company. Uh, but that will be in place for you. So, And we're going to try to make sure that that's as substantial as possible. So. That's very cool. Yeah, just so you know. So don't go out buying web hosting uh, just yet for your... <laughs> for your uh, website, we'll be able to hook you up with a good deal. OK, so I'm going to create a new folder here on our host that says, uh, that's 003. And perhaps, Eric, if, uh, if it would be possible, if you, if you see anything that's relevant in the chat room coming through uh, that I may miss just because we're coding away, then just, uh, just let me know, um, right. as long as it's relevant to the web development uh, that we're doing. 
Okay, so I've uploaded that to 003 now. Okay. And I'm going to upload. Okay, so I've got my style sheet now uploaded. I'm going to close the GIMP because I'm done with that. And let's get back to our website. So you're looking at 002. Let's change over to 003. Now you'll see that menu. Let's see. Did I save that? I didn't save it. See the star up there? <laughs> okay, so we've got color on menu is FFF. All right, now I'm going to upload that with my FTP application. That's just the style sheet. Style.css. And now back at our website. If I re refresh, you'll see that the color is now turned to a perfect white. Okay. So now you're saying that that's Arial. So here's where things are a little bit different than <coughs> HTML. We're going to go font family. Arial, for example. Okay. Now it's gonna we're gonna expand it from there, but we're just gonna get this started. Now most people are gonna have Arial, but we gotta keep in mind that some people may not. Okay. So I'm uploading that and refreshing. And you'll see the font has now changed to Arial. Okay. So what we'll want to do is just get online, get onto you know your favorite search engine, and just do a search for. Um, font family, Arial. And what you're going to find is that people have made some suggestions as to what, uh, what would be a good font family property for the Arial font. So click around on some of those and uh, here's someone who's using Arial as the default, Helvetica as the fallback, and Sans Serif as, you know, if, if the user doesn't have either of those it's going to default to whatever the, the default system Sans Serif font is. So that, to me, that sounds reasonable. That sounds good. Um, so let's paste that into our uh, CSS here. OK. So it's going to look like that. I'm going to clean up that. OK. So that's what we end up with. I'm going to upload that. And learn to use the, the web as a, as a resource, because sometimes you'll come across stuff where it's like, oh, well, you know, how do we? do this or that with CSS, how do I take that font, for example, let's just say we want to do a font transformation. I can do a quick uh, search for CSS, all caps, for example. So what I want to show you is not to be afraid to use things like Google and whatever search engine you use and, you, and say, oh yeah, okay, I could do text transform, for example, and go uppercase. Okay. So while while I know that you can use that as a resource. You know what I mean? Like it's not you don't have to know every little CSS trick. You don't have to say, "Oh, well, Robbie knew how to do that, um, but I don't know how to do that, so I can't replicate this." Use the search engines as a resource so that you can say, "Okay, well, can I use CSS to go all caps?" And here with one of our first results is taking us to w3schools.com and we've got this text transform command. So let's jump back to our CSS file here. And within menu, okay, I'm going to just simply paste that in. Text transform uppercase, okay? You see how picky I am about my code. I'm always going to have a space after the colon. Things like that. All right? So I've pasted that in. You can type it in because you know it now. I'm going to upload my style sheet and you'll see now without having touched my index.php and without having actually coded all caps into this, when I refresh, it's now all caps. Okay? But the interesting thing is, if I hit Control u in Firefox to view the source and then look at how it's actually being output, it is not all caps. So what's happening is, is that CSS is using the tr text transform property to now convert that visually to the browser as all caps. So you're not yelling at the search engines when they do a, an index of your site. Um, they're seeing, the search engines will actually see it as the regular case, uh, which is kind of interesting. So next up, we need to actually be able to make links out of our menu. Um, any questions up until this point, I should ask? How, how are you following along? And oh, we're good so far. Yeah. Easy peasy. Cool, cool. 
No questions in the chat room at this point. Uh, perhaps like you could do your editing live and then or do it and then upload it so that you're not uh, back and forth here with the uh, change it, upload it, refresh it. This is live, baby. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> Um, that's part of the that's part of the fun. I want you to be able to follow along. I want you to be able to uh, to to um, catch how this uh, how this takes place. But thanks for that, Eric. That was JFT. <laughs> yeah, blame it on the rain. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. This episode of Category Five TV is brought to you by Pogo Plug, available at cat 5tv slash Plug, and of course Planet Calypso, cat 5tv slash Calypso. And do make sure you check out our sponsors. Uh, that encourages them to uh, to support Category 5. And, of course, their support is a large part of what uh, helps us to be able to do what we do here. Um, so, again, cat5.tv slash pogoplug and cat5.tv slash calypso. Cool? All right, so we've got our menu basically uh, programmed in there, ready to go. All right, it's looking good. And if you're following along, it's demo dot cat five dot tv slash zero zero three but right now there's there's nothing there but text it's not actually doing anything so we want to actually create links for example we don't have any pages yet so we can't actually make them go anywhere but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say here's how we make a link in uh, html a href equals and we're gonna just go to, to pound because that's not gonna go anywhere normally we would go index.php, which we can do with home, because that's exactly where it's going to go. Okay. For about us, let's use the hash, because we don't want it to go anywhere just yet. We are going to change that, and we don't need etc. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of what it's looking like so far. Now, what's going to happen to our CSS when we upload this? You're going to see something happen here, and if you're refreshing on the website, you'll see already that our menu now looks kind of off. Oh, and I'll upload index.php. Here we go. There. So now you see we've lost our styling. We've lost the color of our menu. And that's because now this is actually a, a link. And so it's being interpreted a little bit differently than uh, just plain text. So the only thing that's being interpreted the way that our CSS asks it to is that little separator in the middle, the pipe. Okay? So in order to, to change that, now what we want to do, if we want the style to be the same, okay, I'm going to go menu, and then I'm going to go comma, pound menu, which is the, in the uh, menu ID, and we're going to go A. All right, so that's link, basically. Uh, and this is just to keep it real simple, okay? So that is now going to colorize, if I upload my style.css, that's going to colorize those links as white. Okay? But now what we want to do is we want to actually fix the fact that it's showing with an underline as well. Okay? So where we want to go is the same place. We're going to go. Text decoration, none. I just want to get rid of the underline, that's what I want. There we go. Okay, so that's gone. Now I need to determine what's going on with our spacing here. I'm going to throw the border back on to our menu just to see what's happening here. See if it's gone and gotten real narrow on us. No, it hasn't. But it is spaced a little bit oddly. The A is getting the 100%. Okay, so what what I've done there, and this is you know troubleshooting as we program, is I've created a bit of a an issue there because my menu ID has a specified width. Okay, so if you have something like this occur, you know that okay, well I've specified that this carry the same as menu, 
And so now my link is that wide as well. So that's causing a big problem. So to fix that, what I want to do is I want to separate out these two elements. So menu is going to become a wrapper, and A is going to be outside of that wrap, uh, is, is going to be inside of it, but it's not going to have a width specified. Okay. So I'm going to grab those those things that I needed there. Okay. I'm going to change the color again to white because this is a different element. This is now the link on menu, but see I've separated those out so that the link no longer has the width specified. Okay. So let's see how that works. I'm going to upload that. It's just my style.css. Sample site is demo.cat5.tv slash 003 for tonight. And now if I refresh, you'll see that my menu is back to where it was. However, now these things are links. I guess you can't really see that because um, it hides my cursor. However, if I click, you see that it does create a border around it because it is a link. Okay. So next up, let's get a little bit more fancy. Let's change our color of the menu. If I, if I may, Krista, this is your creative baby, right? Oh, well, I don't know about what that I'm gonna do. What I'm going to do is I'm <laughs> going to just take it down to a, a slightly less vibrant white, okay? So we want to have a little bit of a, a rollover effect. So let's take that and we'll try all A's and just see how gray that is. Again, you can use the GIMP uh, or Photoshop to use your color palette. So now that's changed it to a bit of a gray. Probably a bit too gray for your liking. What do you yeah. think? Um, yeah, maybe sitting on top of the red. Red's kind of a tricky color to yeah. put neutrals let's on try, top of. Let's, let's go happy medium. CCC is in between AAA and FFF. <laughs> OK. And there. So it's just a slight gray. But what's going to change here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Sorry, I'll, I'll show you what CCC looks like here. OK? So now back at our CSS, without having to do any JavaScript or anything like that, we're going to just go menu, a hover. OK, we're going to create a new thing here. And notice we're not having to create new IDs, because this is all happening within menu. That's that div. And it's happening to the link, and it's happening when I hover. Color. FFF, okay? Now upload that. So what I've told it to do is that when I hover my mouse over that link, I want it to change from CCC to FFF. CSS allows us to do things like that. So now when I hover my mouse over it, it's actually changing the color. See? So you get that little bit of a, a rollover effect. You can also do things like uh, if you want to add like an effect like a, an underline that shows up when you hover over. Okay. Sometimes that's a nice clean effect kind of thing. So, um, so we're getting through the navigation system, the CSS as it is. And uh, while visually it doesn't look like we're making a lot of progress, this is all part of the process of creating a website. So here we have our navigation system in place. It's ready to start receiving you know, our menu items. But for now, we're just going to leave that as a placeholder. And we're going to jump back to our mock-up here and see where we need to go next. We've got that wood grain, right? So let's get started with positioning that wood grain. Jump over to our images folder. And there it is there. Wood grain underscore BG. It's 950 by 275, which I'm going to have to refer to again. Okay, but I'm going to go rename that, and I'm just going to copy the I've copied the name to clipboard. I'm loading up index.php, and we remember from uh, previous segments in this series what that file does. And we're going to go outside of see where div id menu opens. Now it closes there. So I want to create a, a new line there, okay? Because this slash div 
is actually closing the wrapper. And we need everything to happen within that wrapper. So we're going to now create a new div. And uh, we'll call this header. I don't think we've used that yet. And we're going to uh, add an NBSP, which is a non-breaking space. Okay. Basically an empty character. It's something invisible so that it just is a placeholder. So now in our CSS file, I'm just going to move down a little bit here, and uh, we're going to create the new header. Okay, we're going to go height, and again, our height is going to be the height of woodgrainbg.jpg at 275 pixels. Okay, just like that. And now if we upload that file, notice that I've only put a red border and one pixel around that just to show me where it's landing. there because I didn't upload index.php which contains the div. Don't forget. Technical difficulties. Well, if you, no, not even. <laughs> like, I mean, if you ever think, hey, why isn't it showing up? There's probably something that you've done. <laughs> Obviously so. So you'll see that this is now being placed up at the very, very top of the site and that's because of the way that the divs are being positioned. So, uh, like, because the fact that we have, let's see, we have a logo floating left We've got a menu floating right. So what we need to do is we need to tell our header, let's see if this does it. We want to clear both, which is to clear both our left and right. Let's just see if that's going to put our positioning in the right spot. There we go. Okay. So if you understand what happened there, this is flo the, our logo is floating left, our menu is floating right. When we created a new div, it was in the middle technically. So it ended up on top of both of the other ones because it wasn't floating at all. So it's at the very, very top of the page. Now I told it clear both, which means take the left and the right and then uh, clear that so that you're now uh, clear of those two elements. And now our border is falling in the right place. So we're going to uh, implement our wood grain. So we're going to go background, URL, images, woodgrainbg.jpg, okay, just like that. And now I'm going to say no repeat, because there isn't going to be any repeating on that. We don't have to specify a position for it, because everything it's going to fill the entire element. So now, if we save that and upload style.css, remember, I'm not having to change anything in my index at this point, because I'm just doing it all through CSS. And now it's going to slap that wood grain in there with the red border. Now we want to remove the red border from that, because that was just a placeholder to tell us where this was going to land. There we go. And upload our style.css file. And refresh. And now we're starting to come together with the way that our website is going to look. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We're online at www.category5.tv. And tonight we're continuing with Part 5 of our web development series. And you can find that particular series at cat5.tv slash webdev. Uh, one of the things that we're working towards is actually having series like this uh, available strictly through uh, our RSS feeds. We're working on a new feed for that, as well as our mobile app. Um, well, I call it an app. It's really a website. And uh, we had a question come in. I don't know if you saw that one, Eric. Uh, somebody was asking specifically about whether we have a mobile uh, version of our website. Do you happen to have that I question by chance? I will take a look. All right. Uh, here's one from uh, Invincible Mutant. OK, it was in King Yap. Uh, by the way, what is your, OK, no. I have just gone to the category Five web from my mobile. It seems to be bandwidth intensive. Do you have a launch mobile site? There's okay. a question. Yeah. All right. So what I do have for you is uh, mobile.cat5.tv, and what this is, uh, you can you can add this to your desktop of your your mobile device, 
and it gives you access to the current show as well as uh, past shows. So if I click on episodes, for example, it actually gives me a list of all the different shows here. And you can click on one to find out more information about the episode itself. And then, of course, you can play it. It also shows you how many megabytes it's going to use of your data plan if you are on a data plan. Of course, uh, if you have Wi-Fi, that's ad advisable. Um, but this app is uh, mobile.cat5.tv. Uh, and I think you'll, uh, you'll find that that works really well on uh, any mobile device. And certainly, uh, we, we try to make that compatible with absolutely everything. Um, and uh, in particular, uh, it's, a, it's neat to see it running on tablets. I've seen some pictures of people using it on a tablet where uh, it's actually coming up full screen and works really, really well. Um, so that's available for you at mobile.category5.tv, or pardon me, mo mobile.cat5.tv, should say. <laughs> so big correction there. Um, and what I was, what I want to do is I want to actually have features like this available on that. So you'll be able to um, zoom in right on the feature as well. So nice to have you here tonight, and I uh, hope that you're enjoying the uh, the series. Uh, it's been a lot of good feedback. Good. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Certainly a lot of fun for us, I think, to, to be able to really sit and, uh, and work on a particular uh, project like this. So, which, uh, for this week, I'm pretty happy with the progress mm -hmm. as far as it's that coming goes. Coming along. Yeah. It's starting to take shape. And it's starting to look like, uh, like your website and your mock-up. Um, so we'll leave it at that for this week, but what I will do is I will uh, upload the files for you um, so that you can have everything as it is uh, this week. Uh, you'll see those at cat5.tv slash webdev and uh, we'd love to have you follow along and please uh, respond uh, to that that site. You can actually post a comment at the bottom and uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we've received uh, a lot of good feedback, a lot of people saying that it's it's a lot of fun and they really appreciate the, uh, the series. So, um, And I even got one today from Jot who says that he's not interested in web development at all so it gives him a chance to sleep. <laughs> or there's that. That's fine. There's that too. And if you're finding that, you know, hey, this is this is not my forte, this is not something that interests me or anything like that, then we will we will be of course uh wrapping up the series as we finish off the website and uh we appreciate you hanging out with us anyways. Uh we've got some great incentive for you. Uh of course being April, it is another month. I've got a ton of these guys to give away. I I just felt the chat room go. <gasps> Quivering Not today. with excitement. <laughs> Not today, <laughs> but you know there is incentive for for you to, to join us week after week here at Category Five TV. You know we'll, we'll we'll send you prizes and and cool things. We've got a copy of Wirecast to give away if you want to broadcast your own uh, show. Uh, that's pretty cool, uh, and we're always uh, adding more things to that as well. So we encourage you also to check out our website Category Five TV. Get involved in the community. And uh, and like I say, if you're if you're not sure about the series, if it's not something that interests you, I hope that uh, that you find other things here at the show uh, of interest as well. And uh, this is a series that uh, we'll probably I, I get a feeling that we're at, we're at uh, part five right now. We haven't got a set schedule as far as how it's going to go, um, but I think we'll probably be ready to to make this site live within the next few weeks. There you I go. Would say. Uh, so Chris Reich has a suggestion that would make this a whole lot of fun. And he was going to send us a bottle of Jameson, I believe, but he's su suggesting a new <laughs> game. Every time uh, you mispronounce a word, oh, everyone, <laughs> everyone takes a drink. Thanks, Chris Reich. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> would we make it through the show? Is that <laughs> it's, it's a good coffee, but yeah, we, we got to get through the show. got to get through the show. <laughs> we could beta test that game. Oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Thanks, uh, Eric. I'll leave that. He's alone. on my side, Chris. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Chris and I, uh, I think we'll get along fine. <laughs> you know, there are viewers who gang up on me, just like you, Eric. I've never ganged up on you. Know, I'm only one person. I can't gang up on you well, all by myself. Oh, here he goes correcting my my. <laughs> what is that? I, I do get email correcting my my gra grammar and pronunciation and stuff, and it's like. I appreciate the comments, but uh, helps you better yourself. Right? It just, well, I guess, but it's just it seems kind of irrelevant to me, to some degree. Better or beta, tomato, 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 potato, tomato, potato. It just doesn't. Pipeline, pipolini. <laughs> you know, what? It's real. I love that line. I'm feeling melancholy. <laughs> 
just just for the sake of feeling melancholy. Oh, Maybe that's what I think about my it. My goodness. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, yeah. You can get your questions in ca- uh, live at category 5tv Chris Reich, making fun, having fun. I know. Okay. I know. Who, who was that said? Oh, Eric perks up. He heard the word drink. What was that? Drink. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to start calling him Father Jack. <laughs> and if you recognize the reference, then uh, then you will get a, a chuckle, I'm sure. Oh, and it's pronounced bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I'm going to pull up the chat room. Nice to see everybody there. Uh, Category5.tv. And our chat room is uh, is very active during the show, and certainly uh, <laughs> we do have a lot of people that join us uh, after the show as well. So, uh, And we're, uh, we're going to be sticking around in the chat room for a few minutes after the show as well, if you want to say hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Well, uh, do we have any questions or anything like that that we can touch on? I wanted to leave the the series at a, at a good spot there tonight, so um, so that way we can come back to next week. But. Well, I I did want to to point out that the uh, you know the Maple Leafs and the Washington Caps are tied one one. That's a good thing. The Leafs aren't losing. Oh, that wasn't really relevant, was it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Uh, I, there's a game on tonight? That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> Who the knew? Are, the Leafs are perilously close to hitting the golf course is what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple people in the chat room asking where Hillary's at tonight with the news, and uh, she took the night off tonight. Um, so she will, as far as I know, be returning next week. Uh, it was just a, another obligation that she had, and uh, and we're happy to give her the night off. So, um, so yes, there will be news again next week. So, Cool. Cool. Yeah. You playing hockey these days, Eric? Tonight's my last Tuesday night for the summer. Your last Tuesday night? Yeah. Wow. So what does that mean for you? Like, are you... That means we'll probably uh, stop somewhere after the game. <laughs> oh, well. Are you... And, and are you doing well this season? Like, how... I am still walking and talking and not on crutches, so it's... Yes, I'm doing really well. Okay. <laughs> If that's all it, if that's all it is. Am I playing well? Right. Well, how's your team doing as far as the rankings go and stuff? Oh, uh, no, no, we're we're not we're not in the hunt. We are failing <laughs> no, no, miserably. No, no. Exactly. We are all so melancholy. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. I can't even say melancholy. I'm trying not to encourage him, folks. It's, it's uh, <laughs> I'm not doing well at it. But, uh, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, it's been a lot of fun tonight. It's nice to have everybody here. John, great to see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice to have you here this week. I think we covered everything. And uh, Eric, always a pleasure. I didn't see John. Yes. Oh, there he is. He's, He's here. around. <laughs> He's hiding. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, nice to have you here. Thanks for being on the show and uh, being a part of the series again tonight. No, thanks for having me. Yeah. Somebody was uh, mentioning to me a story that I'll just throw in at the <laughs> very last moment because we've got a, a moment here. Uh, we were talking last week about uh, wireless security and the fact that you think that you're safe. And we got sure. s- started talking about packet sniffing and the, and the fact that somebody could pick up stuff and intercept um, data that's being transmitted from your laptop or wireless device, your, your mobile device to Wi-Fi, things like that. And we talked about encryption, and, and I think that the points that I make are, are reasonably valid, especially considering there are pack, uh, packet sniffers and key loggers out there. And uh, somebody mentioned to me uh, just today, actually, uh, on that note, that uh, that they recently heard of someone who was on vacation or, or something, and they there was somebody sitting at a picnic table near their car, car, and the person locked their car with the key the key button <laughs> thing, and this person, I guess, had some this is this the suspect uh, what they suspect anyways had some kind of packet sniffing device that allowed them to tr- uh, trace the code that was generated by that that key and uh, so they were actually able to then reverse that I don't know it's some kind of hacker device or something and they were able to then open the car once that person had left um, just by pushing a button on their device because it had logged the code and it had picked it up so um, so what my friend wow. is saying is it's actually a better idea just to use your key these days oh, it takes I don't so know. much effort though I know just they actually have to put the key in and but that's kind of scary that those kind of things are out there. That those kind of devices, someone with enough money to, to buy one, can just get your key code and all of a yep. sudden they're opening your car. If you've got an auto starter, who knows what they can do. 
I don't know. You know, somebody Scary with stuff. enough money to buy one of those is probably not wanting to well, break into my cobalt. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe they stole. No, but they they got into the car and they took everything that the guy owned that was in the car. Like he's on vacation, he's he's got his car oh, loaded okay. up with stuff, right? So you got the trunk filled with with all your your stuff. And there goes my smelly hockey, hockey equipment. And whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, just just a little story for you. Anyways, have a great week, everyone. Nice to see you, and uh, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday night uh, as we continue our series on web development, and uh, we look forward to talking to you. Email us this week live at category5.tv, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye. See you later.